Hey everybody, my name is Frank, and this is the Pothon Programming Video Log. Today, I'm going to show you how to increase the efficiency of your tile-based game, so stay tuned to find out how it's done. In this video, I'm going to briefly show you my original approach to drawing tiles and the issues I encountered with that technique. Then, I'm going to show you how to fix those problems and implement a tile buffer to dramatically decrease the number of draw calls you make on every frame. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to post them, and if you learned something from this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Alright, so first a critique of my original example on how to draw a tile map. It works, but it's not as efficient as it could be. So let's imagine that this example has a game loop that executes 30 to 60 times per second. That's going to render our tiles to screen 30 to 60 times per second. With this approach, every single tile in this map is rendered on every single frame of animation. So this isn't a 10 by 10 map for the sake of simplicity. Let's say it's a 10 by 10 map. That's 100 tiles. That's 100 tiles on every render times 30 to 60 frames per second. That's going to be 3,000 to 6,000 draw calls per second for our game loop. And that's a lot. And we don't need to do that because obviously this is a static image. It's not moving. Let's say it's just a background uh, tile map and we don't even have any animations on it. Uh, you don't need to draw every single tile every frame per second. What you can do to improve is just draw each tile to a buffer one time and then reuse that buffer over and over again to draw your map. That's going to reduce 3,000 to 6,000 draw calls to 30 to 60 draw calls just drawing the buffer. Initially, of course, you're going to have to draw each individual tile to the buffer, but after that, you're good. Uh, and that's a huge performance gain. Another thing is inside the for loop that actually loops over your tiles, you can take out the arithmetic. You don't need complicated arithmetic. So when I first started doing this, I came up with this nice short little way to place all the tiles uh, on the map, on the, the buffer, or on the drawing context that you actually see on the screen. Uh, and you can do this. It's nice and compact and it works and it only uses one for loop, but you don't need to use a modulus operator uh, or two multiplication operators or a division operator. You can get away with just using addition and get the same effect and it's going to be much more performant because the same way you were drawing you know 3,000 to 6,000 times per second you're going to be using these arithmetic operators every time this loop executes so you can get rid of those and increase performance there as well so now that I've pointed out the flaws with the original approach let's take a look at the improved approach and see how it works all right, so here is our new and improved example that runs more efficiently. I also made it look a little nicer, which is cool. I've got four tile types here. I'm not going to go into the details on how to actually draw a tile map. If you want that information, do check out the original videos because the concept is still there. Um, and it's it still works the same, and that will explain things a lot more in depth in terms of just getting a tile map on the screen. Uh, but let's talk about what makes this more efficient. So we've got two canvases here. We've got a buffer canvas and a display canvas. The display canvas is actually referencing the canvas element in the HTML. So it's going to reference this canvas element right here, whereas the buffer I'm creating. And the buffer is going to be what we draw all of our individual tiles to. And then we're going to just stamp that buffer into the display canvas every time we need to draw the tile map. So 30 to 60 times a second, I'm just going to draw the buffer. And initially at setup, I'm going to go ahead and draw all my tiles to the buffer once and not have to do that again. All right, so uh, the first difference that I want to talk about here is all of a sudden we care about the height and width of the map. Before, we don't really need to know the height and width of the map because we're doing all of those calculations in the rendering loop itself. We don't reference height and width because we're just iterating through the actual indices of the map here. But to make it more efficient, we can get rid of all this math that calculates position based on indices, and we can just use addition. So let's take a look at that. Instead of looping through the map indices, we're going to be looping through actual positions of tiles. So we're going to start at a position where top is equal to 0 and left is equal to 0. This is just y and x. You can think of it like that, but more specific to the side of the tile. So we're going to start at top is 0 and left is 0. Uh, for every row, we're going to go ahead and increment through the columns. 
So for, for the top position, we're going to loop through every single left position of all the tiles in that row. So we're going to start at top zero, left zero, and we're just going to increment up by tile size until we get all the way across. And then we're going to increment down top, and we're just going to keep going from left to right, top to bottom, until we get to the end. Uh, the index that we're going to use for getting tile values out of the map is actually defined outside of the loop. In the old code, we had that as the actual iterator. But since we're looping through tile positions instead of map positions, now our loops have to do with tile positions rather than map positions. So index is defined outside and positions are defined inside of these for loops. So we're kind of inverting it. Before we were just looping through the indexes themselves or the indices themselves. Now we're looping through the positions. And as a result of that, we don't have to do these complicated uh, arithmetic operations to figure out the positions based on the indices. Instead, we just need to figure out what the index is. Uh, we already have the position, and it turns out that that's a lot more simple to do because figuring out the positions when you're looping through positions is just as simple as adding tile size to the x and y value uh, on every increment. And looping through the map indices is as simple as just increasing the map index by one on every iteration. So we've gone from all this complex math to figure out what the position is based on the index to just looping through the position and just incrementing up the index. It's a lot more simple. So it still does draw on every iteration. You have to draw these tiles at least once. So let's take a look at that. We're going to go ahead and get our tile value out of the map based on the map index. Then we're going to go ahead and get our tile from this tiles object. So if I come up here, I've got these different tile objects in here. Each object has a key, which these values here are the keys, 0, 1, 2, 3. Those are going to be the values in my map. Uh, and each tile is an object. You don't have to make it an object. I could have just put a color here, but I figured, you know, this probably is more accurate. I mean, you could put a description in here for a point and click game where you hover over a specific tile and it tells you a description or something like that. I don't know, whatever you want to do. Anyway, these are the tiles. They have colors. Back down here, we're getting our tile value from the map. We're getting our tile object from that tiles object that has our four tiles in it. Then we're going to set the fill style of the buffer canvas context to the tiles color. Then we're going to go ahead and draw the rectangle with that color at the left and top position with the tile size width and height. So we're just going to loop through every single tile, draw them just like this with this very simple uh, canvas drawing API call stuff that we're doing here. And then we're going to increment up the map index and go on to the next tile. Uh, a neat thing you can do with this because the index is separate. I guess you could still do this with the old example. Um, but you could actually flip this thing upside down really easily just by starting the index at the end of the array and uh, incrementing down the index on every iteration. So I know my map is 16 by 14 uh, columns and rows, so I'll just do 16 times 14 and then subtract 1 because our uh, array indices start at 0, not 1. And then instead of incrementing up index, I'm going to increment down index, save, and this should flip our map upside down. Yep. So that's pretty cool. You could actually just flip it upside down that easily and none of this code changes, which is kind of, I thought it was kind of cool anyway. So let's set it back and get that to increment up again, save, refresh, cool. All right. So that's pretty much it. And then. The only other thing that, that I have to show you really is the actual render function. So if you are using this approach and rendering 30 to 60 times a second, this is the function you would be calling 30 to 60 times a second. And when you look at this, it's one line and it's the reduced version, the, the three parameter version of draw image. You're just passing in the buffer canvas image and drawing the entire thing to the display canvas. As as opposed to before, where you are going to call this on every single uh, render. So 30 to 60 times a second, you're going to call this, and this is going to draw all those tiles every single time. 
So this is the huge performance gain. Instead of calling this every single frame and all those draw calls, you're just gonna do one single draw call 30 to 60 times a second. So you're saving yourself for a 100, 100 tile map, you're saving yourself you know, thousands of draw calls if you're running at 30 to 60 times a second or even less than that. So it's a huge performance gain. Uh, let's see, let's talk about a use case. So for a small, a small map like this, this doesn't really matter that much because your, your processor is going to be able to handle doing this over and over again, even though it is 3,000 to 6,000 draw calls per second. Computers are powerful. It's going to be able to handle it. So you might think, you know, I don't really need this. It doesn't really matter. But I'm just going to say this is much more performant and efficiency is everything for your game. So this is a great approach. You should definitely give it a try. Uh, for games like Terraria that have much larger tile maps, this is probably something they do. I'm not saying I know what they actually did to draw those tiles, all those tiles to the map, but I don't think they're drawing every single tile 30 to 60 times per second because that would just be ridiculous. So here's an example that I was just messing around with uh, outside of the channel, and it just zooms in and out. So when I'm zoomed in, I don't have a lot of tiles on screen, and it is pretty snappy. But when I zoom out, I've got way more tiles in the screen and things start to get bogged down pretty fast. I can tell the controls are lagging. Like, I don't know if you can see this because I'm recording at 30 frames per second. I'm not sure what this is running at, but it's definitely more laggy because this example is drawing every single tile on every single frame and that's a lot of tiles to draw. All right, so in conclusion, this is a great way to increase the performance of your game by saving yourself lots and lots of draw calls on every frame of animation. I do want to talk about one more thing before I close out the video and that is this width height ratio property inside the map object. What this is used for is to define well basically how wide the map is to how tall the map is and what this is going to be used for is scaling the map up and down and maintaining its aspect ratio. So as you can see as I increase and decrease the size of the window the map stays the same aspect ratio, but actually scales to fit the window as much as possible. So this is kind of cool, and I wanted to show this because in previous videos I use a similar approach, but I scale with draw image. Here I'm actually scaling with CSS, so if I come down to the resize function here, uh, it's a really simple way to do it. I just get the height and width of the window with document element dot client height and client width. That's going to get my window width and height. Uh, and then I'm going to compare the width height ratio of my window to the maps width height ratio. If the width height ratio of the window is less than the maps width height ratio, I get to keep the width of the window and all I have to do is change the height. So I'm just using this formula here to set the height if the width of the window can remain the same. Like if I want to fill up the width of the window, I'm going to have to change the height. But if I want to fill up the height of the window, I'm going to have to change the width. So that's just how the formula works. But you can just slap this into your code, and this will work really well to maintain aspect ratio and fit a, a bunch of different screen sizes. The cool thing about this is it's really, really simple to implement. I got two if statements, or an if else clause, I guess, if you want to call it that. And then I'm setting the CSS height and width of my on-screen canvas element here and the CSS just takes care of the scaling for me. So it's a really easy way to do it and then also down here I'm calling render display because when we resize we just want to redraw. I, honestly I don't even think I need this down here because it is CSS. So if I go ahead and save that and refresh, let's see what happens. Uh, Well, I'm pretty sure it's not working because I never actually call render display. But let's go ahead and call resize and then at the bottom we'll call render display save refresh oh man look at that all right yeah we didn't even need that in there because it's css if we were using draw image every time we resize that big display canvas that we're stretching to fit the the window size we would have to redraw but with this we don't even have to redraw so i'm just going to go ahead and comment this out learn something new at the end of my video here and this is it. We only have to render one time to the display and uh, the CSS is gonna take care of all the scaling. So I didn't mean to do this in the conclusion of the video because I'm introducing new content, but I mean, I guess it's better that I found it out at the last minute here. 
And anyway, that pretty much does it. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to say was that this approach really lends itself very well to multi-layered uh, games. So say the background was its own layer and you wanted that to pan a little bit differently. So say you have your foreground uh, and your midground and your background and the player is on the, the midground here with these tiles and he would move and the background would scroll probably pretty slowly and the foreground might scroll a little bit faster. So you might have some trees and leaves in the foreground here and like we were saying before, a 10 by 10 map is 100 tiles. So if you have three layers with 100 visible tiles on each one, that's 300 tiles. So now your your draw calls on every frame of animation are just skyrocketing. But if you do this trick with the buffer and you draw everything once and then just redraw the buffer over and over again, you're looking at three draw calls of a sli of well of a larger image. But you're still going to save a lot of time in your rendering loop, and you're going to be able to do uh, a multi-layered scene. A lot more easily and that's pretty much all I wanted to say so I hope you guys enjoyed the video I hope you learned something if you did go ahead and leave a like leave a comment if you have any questions and have a great day